BP Healthcare Group founded by Datuk Beh Chun Chuan says the group has expressed interest in Pharma Nyaga. In an email reply, Beh said BP Healthcare has registered its interest when asked if the company has put in a proposal in a bid to turn around the financially distressed pharmaceutical player. He elaborates that the reason for BP Healthcare's interest in Pharma Nyaga is because the group is in the healthcare business. This confirms the Edge Weekly article titled A Cheap Pharma Nyaga is Attracting Potential Investment. According to sources, Famanyaga is understood to have received several proposals from interested parties looking to take a stake and participate in the company's restructuring. The interested parties include institutional funds, private equity firms and private entities. Last February, Famanyaga fell under Practice Note 17 classification after posting its largest ever quarterly net loss of $664.39 million in the fourth quarter of FY 2022. The company took a hefty 552.3 million impairment on unsold COVID-19 vaccines and also wrote down the goodwill of its Indonesian manufacturing units of 50.3 million ringgit. Farmanyaga is required to submit its regularization plan to the relevant authorities within 12 months of the announcement, namely by February 27, 2024. BP Healthcare was founded by Bay and his wife Datin Polesi in 1982, starting out as a health diagnostic center and has since grown to an integrated healthcare provider including clinic lab, pharmacy, specialist center, ambulatory and dental. Petronas Gas saw a 3.3% uptick in net profit for the first quarter to 424.2 million compared with the 410.6 million posted in the previous year due to higher product prices and lower tax expenses. Revenue also improved by 14% year on year to 1.67 billion from 1.46 billion previously, driven by higher contribution from the utility segment as well as higher product prices. Pet Gas declared an interim dividend of 16 cents per share. On its prospects, the group expects 2023 to remain robust, underpinned by stable earning contracts, but warns that the high gas prices may impact the group's full-year results. It expects the gas processing segment to remain stable on the back of its long-term contracts and sustainable income stream under the second term of the gas processing agreement. PetGas says that amid the higher operating cost environment post-pandemic, the group will continue to strive for operational excellence as well as to strike the right balance balance between growth investments, financial prudence and shareholders distribution. The Securities Commission has taken action against Huibi Global and its CEO Leon Lee for operating a digital asset exchange in Malaysia without registration. In a statement today, the SC said it has issued a public reprimand against Huibi and Lee for operating illegally. In addition, the regulator had ordered Huibi to stop its operations in the country, including disabling its website and mobile applications on several platforms such as Apple Store, Google Play and any other digital applications application platform. Huibi has been directed to cease circulating, publishing or sending any advertisements, whether in email or on social media platforms, to Malaysian investors. Lee, as the CEO, has also been specifically ordered to ensure that the above directives are carried out. This decision followed concerns about the platform's compliance with local regulatory requirements and protecting investors' interests. The SC said it views this breach seriously as operating a DAX without obtaining the SC's registration as a recognised market operator is an offence under Section 71 of the Capital Markets and Services Act 2007. The SC urged Malaysian investors who have been using Huibi to immediately cease trading through its platform, withdraw all their investments and close their accounts. Chaya Mata Sarawak saw its net profit for 40.9% year-on-year to 42.6 million on lower profit contribution from the road maintenance, property development and phosphate divisions. According to its boss filing, CMS's profit contribution from associates also fell 69%, which was partly due to the group no longer recognising profits from an associate, OM Materials, which it had disposed of in December last year for 120 million US dollars. Revenue for the quarter, however, was up 28.8% to 275.67 million from 214.04 million a year earlier due to higher contributions from the 
Cement and Oil Tools divisions. On its prospects for FY2023, CMS said that performance of its divisions in the first quarter reflects the active infrastructure and rural development works in Sarawak. The group says this is expected to continue for the remainder of FY2023, CMS adding that its group of companies are in position to benefit from these developments. CMS's board of directors hold the long-term view that the Sarawak economy will remain robust. Tycoon Tan Sri Syed Mukta Al Bukhari is looking at bringing in an investor into MMC Port Holdings in a deal that could value the country's biggest port operator at more than 12 billion, Reuters reports. His conglomerate MMC Corp may sell a stake of up to 30% in MMC Port, according to people with knowledge of the matter, adding that financial investors and companies have approached MMC Corp about their interest in the port's business. A sale could be a precursor to a potential MMC Port's listing on the Malaysian Stock Exchange in a few years, Reuters reports according to sources. MMC Corp and MMC Ports did not respond to requests seeking comment. Deliberations were ongoing and no decisions have been made, the sources added, declining to be identified as the discussions were private. Amid a high inflationary environment, global investor interest in infrastructure assets has grown with sovereign, pension and private equity funds eager for solid long-term returns, according to the Reuters report. Global container volumes have also soared due to supply chain disruptions and congested ports, spurring deal discussions in the sector.